everyone, it is CT Jet, and welcome back to another 1.5 video. Word of warning, stuff that I talk about may or may not be included, and there may be more stuff included. Also, I do not know all of this stuff yet, so my stuff might be a little weird when I explain it. But anyway, let's go ahead and open up the Lewis script object. It looks different now. So essentially, we now have our functions, which is called by the game, and it does stuff. So if we go ahead and open these up, we can see that this would be our this run, if you know, if this first run, and this is just always there. You want to leave that in because it allows you to do certain things, and yeah that's it's pretty useful um and uh this would be our main thing underneath everything else and this is also just for the uh oh what's it called the game so you can see that we still have the string library and the table library but we also have a listen on input and use external editor so if we click on this you can see that i have my stuffs and you can go ahead and read that, but that'll be in the uh, actual version. And I can also do listen on input, which would mean that if I did another function, function, what would that be called? Um, on underscore input type data, uh, that would allow me to say, you know, when this is pressed, that equals true, or something like that. So, you'll also see that we have a track object and that'll give us the name the ID the type uh, the global ID and the position of it so that's fun so let's go ahead and look at the first thing that I've prepared and also I've only selected a few commands to make stuff for um, there's plenty of other stuff though which I'll cover the in the end and a link down in the description if I remember it otherwise yell at me and I'll put it in there that was super loud. I'll have to cut that out in post. There probably won't be any video game sound. But anyway, if you go ahead and look at that, he's teleporting. Oh my gosh. Entity colon warp. So if you go ahead and look at this command, we'll see that I'm literally, this, this part didn't need to be there. I'm literally just setting the world part and then if that reads if one of those reads one then it'll teleport it to the other side and if the other one reads one it'll teleport it to that side and I didn't need that either there we go next I have a note there for myself we have this little demonstration and it looks like the rocket is burning stuff up where in reality I'm just doing a ray cast from the rocket and then if I'm if there's an entity there, then I am absorbing it. There you go. Also, I I have to configure this. You can see that now there's a configure button, and you can actually set it to absorb. You know, 60 seconds, or don't absorb at all, which I'm doing in the just absorbing of the Lua. But that is very useful. All right, next thing you probably saw this already. Jump, 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 jump. Perfect. Amazing. Glorious. What am I doing? I am setting the velocity, and I am also applying torque. Those are two new commands, and they are also very useful. Can Did anyone hear warp speed on a spaceship? Because I just said it. And also cloaking device, which I will talk about next, which is right now. Cloaking device time. Oh my gosh. Look at that. You can hide and show, but physics still exist. I haven't tested this with commands, but uh, ignore the uh, messed up meshes. But if you go ahead and watch this, f physics still exists. I'll, let me just take... I can't remember what the hotkey is for that. 
Let's go ahead and do that. If you hear a train in the background, that is a thing. Let's grab a jumper. Go ahead and delete the wire. Put that there. And you can watch and see that physics still exists. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and do something else. I am going to return the name. Now, uh, game message, and then we're going to do uh, n. Yeah, I already had that prepared up here. Name. There we go. And you can see that it is a ball. Now, this is very useful because you can now have something that has a scanner. You can scan it. If the name equals this object, then it's $10 instead of just having, you know, an ID. Or if it's this object, it's 20 And IDs are hard to memorize. You could just say ball or um, metal ball or something like that. All right. I'm going to just change that to zero because I don't want to have to mess around with the jumper because it's stupid. Next thing is also very helpful. I just tipped over. I am selecting this object right here. and When I press F, it breaks the connections. How awesome is that? Just imagine the crashes that will happen now. So you can see that I'm literally just doing N disconnect all and n is the entity also also you can now just do world get entity and it'll be like that it'll do the same thing as world get entity by id here's a change i forgot to mention in my other video if you've already watched that or if i uploaded that one first the joystick outputs these and then you can also use an uh a few half packs and then an eight hand I think ATAN2 to do that. Also, if you just notice this, they were fighting it out. That robot won. His he is still alive, and this guy lost, and he's dead. And all I'm doing there is getting the HPs. Where's the Lua for that? No, wrong buttons everywhere. I I had that pulled up. Uh, I'm literally just getting HP which is an entity command. And now, the end of the video. I am sorry, guys, but it's been a little short one. But Lua changes are... You're supposed to experiment with them, essentially. So, uh, you can go ahead and see all of these entity commands. Uh, what's next? I believe I had the this command. The creature commands. Creature commands, which work on stuff like animals and robots, such as the get HP or get armor. Um, what's next? Game commands, I can get the FPS, set a variable, slash get a variable, uh, submit a score, restart, which is very useful. Let's say you fall into a pit, you can restart the level entirely, except it won't pull up a prompt. And you can get the screen cursor, and I don't believe I know what that does. I haven't messed around with that. Um, yeah. Bunch of this commands, such as 3D lines, gradient 3D lines. Uh, gradient lines, get ratio of the screen, get resolution of the screen. Uh, if it has a plug, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I believe is how that's numbered. Uh, you can also add a static sprite, which does not stay in the same place on the screen, but instead stays relative in the world. Let's say I draw a static sprite where that Lua is at the start, then it will always be there, and you only have to call it once instead of every time. Also, I could have a static sprite such as a uh, a Lua script, not a Lua script, what am I talking about? A uh, Flappy Bird pipe and have my Flappy Bird moving, which also reminds me that I am going to be reshooting that with these new changes. So that's awesome. Alright, next up, and finally, we have the worlds and we can set the background color get a screen point get a world point get borders get adventure ID which is very useful because we can get the robots adventure ID I believe so now we can do stuff on there we can also get the entity which is the Elias for the entity by ID 
Uh, we can get a sprite texel, which is very useful, and we can also get ID, which I don't I don't know what that is, um, but I think that's get if you. Uh, oh no 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 no! I'm sorry, that was a this, not world. Oops, but yeah, this get ID. So I'm going to link to those commands in the bottom. S stack approved. So yeah, all right. Thanks for watching, and side note, this will not break any Lua scripts, hopefully, from 1.4 and below, because they have kept in, you know, the this run and done some checks, except it won't work in any levels for 1.5, so don't try it. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and sub, and I will see you next time. Thank you.